right guys today might be the day that we're gonna go ahead and try to install this lift kit i'm gonna start with the front and hope for the best so stay tuned all right so we're gonna go ahead and try to get this started first things first we should it's gonna be hard to see in here but there is a switch, it's a tow run switch. It's located right there. And I turn on my light, but my battery's running low, so I'm gonna have to plug it in. So you just gotta push that down and turn that off. Okay, so now that makes it safe for you to work on the cart. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these wheel covers off. So the first thing we need to do is gently pry this wheel cover off. And you just go around the whole thing. Until it, until it comes off. So my next thing is uh, going to be removing these slug nuts. You guys, I'm pretty sure know how to do it. I'm not gonna video it, but you get the idea. Just It's just four. All right guys, the first thing we need to do is remove this front piece here. This one right here. So the way we remove that, so it's this one right here, that one, and it goes to the top. So you hold that down and you just zip this out right here, okay? So remove it from here you hold it up here, which is hard to see, and then you take this bolt out, or this nut out, okay? Like I said, I already uh, loosened it up. I did the other side already, and this slides right out. So this would slide right out. And that's it, okay? So now that's out, this should come up, come out. I do have uh, this light that was installed by the previous owner. So I'm gonna end up just cutting it off because I got a whole new light kit. All right, so these were installed in here, which I'm probably gonna just put them back in so they don't get lost, okay? On both sides. Just add like a, a block or something on the back wheels. Uh, if your brake is engaged, it should be fine, but I just add it just in case. Uh, and then when you jack up the, the cart, you do want to use some jack stands. Um, so I just put them back there kind of out of the way. I've got two of them, obviously. So the next thing we need to do is using a 21 millimeter socket, we need to remove and retain the hub and the flange and nut. And then we got to just do the same thing on the other side. So my goal right now is to remove this nut right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out with a 12 millimeter socket and hope for the best. Uh, it looks a little rusty, I might have to spray that with some uh, lubricant. So once removing this, I'll show you what's next and we'll just keep it moving till uh, I get this done. I don't know how long it's gonna take, obviously doing this, these videos are gonna uh, take some time. But I do got to remove the the bolt from the shock. So the, sh the bolt I would have to remove is this one up here. That one. So I'm going to be removing that bolt after this this part right here. So I figure I'll video this. Um, I already got partially out. Obviously, I already backed it out partially. So it came out. Uh, hopefully, the other side comes out the same. So... Uh, let me go to the other side and we start from scratch on that one so you can see now every uh, job is going to be different I'm very limited on space unfortunately um, this guy got so much crap in my garage that came out a little hard all right so I'm gonna remove these and see what I gotta do next okay I'm not doing this off the top of my head I do have some instructions here that's that. So next, I need a half inch socket and I gotta remove the bolt from the shock. So, that means this shock right here, this bolt has got to go, according to the knowledge I have. 
This kit is a, um, just so you know, GTW 6 inch A arm lift kit, part number 18140. Um, and it's for a club cart president. And these instructions are awesome. Everything's in color, as you can see. Uh, pretty easy to follow. So I'm on step five now. So we're gonna use a half inch. I did this, you know, first few steps a little backwards. You know, it tells you to remove the front bumper before the wheels, which I don't think it matters. Um, but anyway, or it doesn't because I'm working on it. So I'm on step five. So step five is showing that I gotta use a half inch socket to remove the bolt from the shock. So I'm gonna be taking this out. All right. So I got this here. According to the instructions, I gotta remove this. Okay, that's out. I'm gonna go ahead and remove um, the the other side too. I don't have much lighting in this garage. I realize that now. All right, so those are out. So the next step is to, uh, according to this, is to um, move it out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the way. All right, guys. So using an 18 millimeter socket and 11 16 wrench, you gotta remove the uh, tie rod. And that being said, it also tells you to remove the cotter pin, which is supposed to be in here. This is missing it. So I'm assuming whoever had it before me was messing with the suspension because it's missing that pin. So I have this wrench on here. Okay. You gotta be careful. I'm not gonna damage anything. And then I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove this. So I got that out. So I think I wanna go ahead and um, put this back on just so it doesn't get lost. So the wrench clamps onto this and obviously the socket goes onto this. All right, so all I did was just remove it from this. So, so far we have the hub, we have this removed. If I can show you good in there. Uh, we have this pull out of the way and we have this. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So next I gotta remove the factory spindle, okay? So it's this bolt right here, and then there's this bolt up here. Okay, so those two are gonna be coming out. Let's see how this goes. Okay, I'm happy with that result. Let's see the next one. that so that came out pretty good so just these two and came out of these I'm gonna do the other side as well so just so you know guys this this was step number seven okay and we use a half inch socket step number eight is gonna be using a half inch socket remove spring plate and leaf spring so the spring plate is this piece right here that I have my light hooked up to. So we gotta remove this plate here. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the spring plate. All right, so <clears throat> what I'm gonna do here, guys, I gotta add some more lubricant because it, it's pretty, Pretty rusty looking up here. Okay. Now I gotta try to get this thing thing out of here. So guys, unfortunately, um, not everything goes smooth. This is the real world, people. Um, so I gotta get this out of here, because it's kind of stuck in there. 
Okay, let me uh, let me get it out. Come on, dude. <clears throat> another one, see if I can get one of them out. I got one out. I hate when they get stuck. Guys, I'm not gonna try to edit this. Okay, this is uh, stuff that happens, unfortunately. Like I said, I'm not a uh, mechanic, but I know how to work on things. And this is the only reason why I feel comfortable taking on this project. But at the same time, this is stuff that happens. It even happens in regular construction. I'm gonna try a different um, method here. I'm gonna try that one. So I'm gonna try a large breaker bar, guys. It's a good size. And uh, let's see what I can do here. Sometimes leverage does wonders. Alright, so I gotta loosen up. I'm gonna try to take it off with the impact now and see what happens. I'm gonna use the same size bit that I'm using not 100% snug but it's good uh, just because I'm not trying to get that thing stuck again. Now, all right so that came out so According to the instructions, this is a spring plate here, okay, it's a spring plate, we just took that off and it goes in this way, um, and we got the spring out, which is or the leaf spring, this is it right here, okay, and that goes downwards, those are probably going to get tossed, it says discard hardware. Let's see, it says retain spring plate and discard hardware. So these nuts or bolts go in the garbage. This, I believe, is trash. We'll see. So the next step is that I gotta uh, remove the bolts that's securing the rack and pinion. Uh, so this here, this here. And this is telling me to remove the bolts so I could gain access to the upper A-arm bolts. So that's next. So I got these bolts out. It was one, two, three. Uh, and basically, it's saying using a half inch socket, remove the factory A-arm and retain hardware. So the factory A arm is located, bolt, or at least a bolt is located back here. Okay, so that's why we had to loosen this. So we're not totally removing it. We just got to get it out of the way so we could get to that. Okay, see that back there? So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go ahead and take those out, and then I'll keep it moving. So I took the bolts out, 
it was very easy pretty long this is for the factory a arm okay so these are right here on both sides and I'll, all you do is just pull them out and they're good they're out see same thing here all you do is just pull it out okay so the next step is and by the way that was the previous step which was um, removing these three screws or bolts ah uh, that was number nine number ten is it was the a arm so we're gonna move on to number eleven the next step <clears throat> is to attach the main suspension piece this bad boy right here so I would attach that I'd install it and then I would reattach this plate here and it would go to this piece here and that is considered step number 13 okay two things number one it's telling me to use locking adhesive and then the other thing is I really don't like the way these look so what I want to do is actually sand them down a little bit clean them up and spray them with some black paint uh, I'm probably gonna do the same thing here okay so I'm gonna end right now I'm not gonna finish it uh, as much as I would love to I just uh, don't like the fact that I'm gonna be connecting this nice shiny black piece to this rusted looking piece um, so my my what I'm gonna be doing is just like I said cleaning them up a little bit scuffing them up spraying some paint on there uh, and then just letting them sit overnight so that's my next step I'll get back to into it as soon as I'm comfortable with the way this is looking all right guys so this is that plate that holds on the uh, new a arm and just held on the existing a arm or the previous a arm what I did I just cleaned it up a little bit with some sandpaper it's not perfectly flat I didn't want to bust out my grinder uh, my whole goal is just to knock off some of that surface rust and then just protect it with some paint. I basically just sprayed some primer on there. I did both sides. I just used this Rust-Oleum uh, professional primer. So next I'm gonna be using this high performance enamel black uh, paint. So I did the first coat. I kind of dusted it a little bit. So the next morning and I decided to paint this. It's not perfect, I just kind of did a light you know, quick sand, and I just went ahead and painted it because it was kind of had some rust on it. So that's that. Did back here. I did the shock too while I was at it, so just to make it look a little more fresh. See, there are some runs. Like I said, I'm just trying to just get some paint on it. I don't care how it looks. Nobody's gonna see it from up close if so if they're that picky then I don't know what to tell you so that's it basically that's painted I'm waiting for that to dry hopefully by tonight it'll be dry so I could go ahead and install the uh, uh, the lift kit I do have quite a bit of overspray now on my floor but it is what it is this is a plate um, once again it's not perfect I got some rough rough areas that's because I it, uh, it, was, it got stuck to the plastic and I did that because uh, it flipped over the other side and it was still kind of tacky. Once that dries then I'll go ahead and install this lift kit uh, which I showed you guys yesterday. I put it back in the box and started getting some primer overspray. So what I did do is I uh, primed everything and I went ahead and sprayed it. Um, so the color should be about similar to that as far as the shine. Matter of fact, this finish is not even that great. Look at that. So, it'll match pretty good then. All right, guys. I'm gonna show you how to clean this aluminum up. Now, I'm not telling you to use this on any motor parts or anything like that, it's just for the frame here. So you can see it has some discoloration there. Uh, you got, I got some overspray. You can see I already kind of cleaned this up a little bit. I'm not going crazy with this. Um, all I'm using is a scotch Bright pad, the green one. You could probably use a less abrasive one. And you just scrub it, that's it. Okay, it's dry, I'm not wetting it, I'm not making a big wet mess. So all it is gonna be providing 
for producing is some dust. But you can see how that's coming out already. I'll show you in the spot here. See where that, that the overspray? Very little elbow grease. Okay. So let's try that out if you have aluminum frame. shiny or nice and clean it's not gonna be a mirror finish it's gonna be like a factory finish we can see you could kind of see some scratches in there uh, like I say you could probably use a less abrasive one but I don't mind I think it's fine it's not gonna hurt anything it's aluminum uh, it's gonna be softer than an average than a metal frame or steel frame but that's what you got there all right guys so this is how it looks after a little bit of um, scrubbing with that. Obviously back there, you know, I could get in there, but I might do a little bit. But for the most part, I think the time that came out pretty good. It looks almost new. I don't want to get too close in here just because I don't want to start scraping the paint that I, you know, that paint I just did. And this is how the other side looks that I haven't done yet. So you got some paint there. So I'm using Scotch Bright. I'm using the green Scotch Bright pad. You got paint overspray there. You can clearly see the difference. Just not even scrubbing too hard. Like I said, it does leave some scrapes, but I kind of go with the grain. Um, for the most part, I think it's looking good. Okay, so I finished this side came out pretty decent that's it so that's how you clean aluminum on a golf cart frame or on a club car frame because these seem to be the only ones doing aluminum frames that's one of the reasons why I purchased a club car because of their aluminum frame um, but obviously they don't rust uh, so that's a big factor for me. And you, as you can see, there's some scratches I have here that were going the opposite way. But, but as you can see, um, yeah, they don't rust. They, you just get a little bit of oxidation or whatever, but it's nothing crazy. The part that I had a little bit of surface rust on was this. Uh, that part in the in the bracket. So now this is all painted. Yes, I do have a run. I know they notice it. I kind of was spraying br blindly in some points, but um, that's how it's looking. So the next step is going to be to go ahead and install the, uh, the lift kit. So we got everything painted. So now I'm just going to go ahead and all these A-arms. Uh, this is uh, step 11 in the instructions. This is it right here. Okay. And according to what I see, it looks like it's going to have to go um, with this side facing forward. And this is going to get installed in the same spot uh, that the uh, previous one was installed. So, it's gonna go in here, right here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the existing um, hardware. Uh, that's what it tells me to do.
and I'm gonna use the, uh, the half inch socket uh, to go ahead and tighten it down. Look, I already got a scratch on my first paint. Okay, so that's in. Next, I'm gonna do the other side. All right, so I got these A-arms in. You can see those are the long bolts that I took out. Okay, and I did both sides. I did kind of scuff up my paint. The paint, I didn't allow it to dry 24 hours, so it's still a little soft, but it's all right. I'm gonna go ahead and install these three screws. All right, so I got these three screws in. I just put a, some more paint on there, those little scratches just to cover up anything. All right, so now the next thing is I gotta try to put this plate um, in, but I gotta put the bottom portion of the uh, suspension assembly. So this is step 13. All right, so I gotta go ahead and install this. I got my jack under it. I'm gonna try to guide it up and hope for the best. Yeah, so I got it kind of in place. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolts in. Um, these are the ones that they supply. I tried them, they seem to work. Um, just make sure you leave space for your, you know, for your hole. Like you got that, um, parchment paper there just to kind of prevent the paint from sticking to the uh, the jack so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this so I gotta cut the tip on it this is it right here and it's squirted so I'll just put this on here I don't know if this is the right way um, let's go here yeah whatever um, if there's a the wrong way let me know I've never probably used this stuff once was in my lifetime. I'm gonna get them all started and then um, I'll button them down with the uh, the tool with the drill. So that goes in through here. And I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down. So there's 40. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them in place. Obviously, there might have to be some movement, but it looks like they're biting. But I'm gonna kind of wiggle it around just to make sure it goes in straight. But that's this step. So I took the um, the jack out. I put two screws um, just to hold it in place, and then I'm just tightening it. Just hang them like a corner to corner just to make sure. Kind of like a tire, you kind of go cross pattern. Alright, that's good. Alright, so those are in, guys. You got four that they provided. Everything's painted, so it looks good. It's not that rusty look that was there before. So, what's next? So we got this in. So we're at number 14 now. So I'm going to be connecting it to this here. And to this here. So I got to install this here. Okay. It's going to go this way. This piece has to face the front. This has this to take out. We gotta remove this, and it's tight, okay? I don't have a, the right size hex uh, tool for that. So I'm gonna use this that I rigged with some tape, so just so I don't scratch it all up. Thing. 
I'm gonna start with the bottom. This one in. I'm not a mechanic. I just play one on YouTube. All right, so I got that in. So then this part's gonna get attached to this right here. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so, so far I went ahead and attached this. I tightened it up. I used the existing uh, nut that was there. Uh, I don't have the carter pins. Apparently these were missing it. So I'm just gonna put, I don't know, whatever I find. I'm gonna put it in there for now. Um, and then I went ahead and reattached this. Okay, this is what they supplied. And I did the same on this side. Oops, same here, same here. So the next step is number 17 is to reattach the hub using the hardware that was retained. All right, so we have Aiden here. Say hi, Aiden. Hi. We're gonna have him install the nut on the hub. Basically, this is what came with it. Once again, I went ahead and installed this. All right, tighten that up, tighten this up. These are still loose. I'm not sure how they told me not to uh, fully tighten them down. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and install this. I did slide this on, uh, it was nice and easy. There was a little sleeve on it from the factory. Um, so I took the sleeve off, there was some grease on it. So there's another sleeve right here that I gotta try to take off. Can you pull that off, Aiden? Not this. Okay, I will. It's hard. Can I use that? Let's try this. Watch out. Watch your fingers. Alright, so we got that off. We kind of had to twist it off. Start screwing it on. Turn towards you. Okay. Turn this way like that. Towards you. Turn it. Turn it. Good job, Aiden. Hmm? Good job. Thanks. Do I need to help you with anything else? Yeah, I'm gonna. We're gonna do the other side, okay. and then we're gonna keep it moving. Okay. What do you think? Good. Good idea. Yeah. All right. So, how it's looking, guys? The best looking thing about this is this guy right here. Where you get your good looks from, Daddy or Mommy? What? Who you get your good look from? Daddy and Mommy. Smart answer. Next. Alright, so we got this all on. This is all tight. We're good to go. Alright, so this is it, guys. The next step is the back. I gotta adjust this, but it tells me to put the wheels on. So, the step, or, yeah. So, I have the wheels. I just don't have the, the new lug nuts. So I think I want to wait for that. Uh, I should have those on Friday. I'm going to show you what I got done. Um, still got a mess here. Look at that baby. That looks sick. Um, so I got the six inch lift kit on there. I did put the wheels on. I was, I was probably, uh, I was thinking of not doing it. But I said, you know what, let me just put them on. I got the regular uh, lug nuts on there. I got the new ones coming on Friday. They got some black ones coming. So I'm gonna switch them out. I just wanna try to get this over with. Um, so, when I was installing this, I left these loose, okay? I understood the instructions the wrong way. Basically, I went back re to reread it because I was trying to understand why that needed to be loose. Apparently, that's not the part that needs to be loose. So this is fine if you tighten that down. This part needed to be I think it was a, a quarter inch they told you to bring it out or so. Um, so this, I couldn't bring it out too much because there's not much uh, much hanging out from the back. Okay. You can see it's like 
more recess. But this, I brought that out about a quarter inch on both sides. So that was the uh, what it was telling me to do according to instructions. Uh, so what I had to do is basically remove the shock and then um, remove this. And then I went ahead and took this out and then uh, kind of twisted it out. So I have that some of that uh, thread showing. Uh, so I did it on both sides. So when it's time for me to, right now it's, it's going to be loose, but when it's time for me to adjust the, the uh, alignment, then I'd be messing with those. But other than that, that's how everything else is fine. Everything's tight. I got some um, temporary pins in there. Or they're just a uh, paper clip that I just cut and then put in there. Uh, just for now, I just got to go pick some up. So overall, this is what what it looks like. I think it's looking pretty good. The wheels, I think, look really good. This looks a little nasty, but uh, whatever I painted is sufficient. It looks good. Uh, it's not, you know, perfect. Uh, you can see it's a little spotty because I tried to touch it up because uh, I got a little scratched up, but uh, overall, I think it looks fine. Now what this is missing is a light kit which I have a light kit, I'm gonna be installing that. So it's gonna cover this whole section up anyways, you're not gonna see it. Yeah, and this does have some holes in it. I was gonna buy a new brow, I'm still debating on it, I'm gonna see. Uh, it's not hard to replace the brow, so if anything, if I decide to replace it, I'll just replace it. And once again, I do have the new uh, rocker panels because these are all bent up. I got the new struts. Uh, and then I'm hoping to have the body because uh, I tried to do a, a wrap and it came out decent up to a certain point. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to have the uh, a painted body. Look at that. That thing looks bad. And it's not even close to done yet. And that aluminum came out pretty good too. See that? It looks like almost new. So everything looks nice and shiny. The plates that I painted look pretty good. They blend in pretty well. They don't stand out with the rust or whatever. All right, so that was the conclusion of the front suspension components. The next video is gonna be showing how we're gonna install the rear part of the suspension. Uh, it's not too much to it, uh, but we are switching out the leaf spring to heavy duty ones uh, to help support the weight of uh, any passenger that's gonna be on the dump run. So stay tuned, hopefully you guys like what you see, I'm hoping I'm giving you some type of value, and hopefully uh, you guys can like and subscribe, that does help me out big time. Once again, thank you guys very much, hopefully you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for the next one.